How you doing, y'all? This is Will Mydell with WillMydellPhotography.com. Um, today, we're going to do a tutorial on creating a digital backdrop. Uh, you can do this for certain reasons. Uh, if you have a backdrop you don't like, uh, you want to add some color. Um, if you're not shooting with strobes or you want a backdrop to make to give the illusion as if you were shooting with strobes and you had hot spots on your backdrop, this can come in handy. So um, I'm going to include in the tutorial the image you see here and it's going to be masked out already because uh, I'm not going to go through the masking process. Uh, we we'll do that on another tutorial. This tutorial is just for our digital backdrops. So to get started, um, as you can see, I have a masked out image here and a regular backdrop. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, well, first what I wanna do is, I'm gonna extend this background. You don't have to extend the background if you want. You can use this as a vertical uh, format, but I wanna kinda give a little more horizontal or maybe a squarish, because I'm probably gonna upload this on Instagram. Go to your crop tool, which is right here. And what you wanna do is click on square. This is totally optional once again. And what I'm gonna do is drag this corner until it snaps to the top. And drag this corner right here until it snaps to the bottom. Then I have my perfect square. I'm gonna hit check mark, okay that. Grab my mold tool. And I'm gonna take that backdrop out. As you can see, this is my mask layer right here. I already masked out earlier for this tutorial. And all right, I'm gonna click on the bottom layer and I'm gonna create a new layer right on top of that. And I'm gonna edit, go to fill, and go to color, and grab a slightly dark gray neutral backdrop. About right there, and click OK. All right, now that we have our backdrop, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna create a new layer. Uh, another good thing too is to name these layers so I don't get all confused. So I'm gonna name this layer first backdrop, or just backdrop. And I'm gonna click on this layer and this is gonna be our uh, crease, which is where you'll see the crease at the bottom folding to the floor or on a, if you were using a regular backdrop. I'm gonna grab a gradient tool and I'm gonna make my foreground color a little darker than this gray right here. So I'm gonna click on that. Um, if you don't remember or if you accidentally hit the default tool or change the, the colors, you can just grab the sampler and click on this and it'll take you back to where this first color was so you'll know where to start it if you want to start getting a darker color, which I am dragging down right now. Dragging down to a little darker. Probably about right there and click OK. And we'll just click hold shift <clears throat> and drag about right there. Oh, excuse me. Make sure the parallel, I think this is parallel gradient, a reflected gradient is clicked on. And hold shift and drag down about right there until you get your gradient. Probably do another one. Just a little long, just a little bigger. About right there. Grab my mold tool, I think I'm gonna move it down. Probably about right here. About right there, I guess. You can always go back and move this, whatever, but nine times out of 10, you know, if you're shooting on the backdrop, it's gonna be somewhere like down here, close to the bottom. All right, and I'm gonna click and create another new layer. And this is gonna be our first hot spot that we're gonna create. So I'm gonna create a name for this spotlight. And I'm gonna grab my gradient tool again and switch out the foreground colors. Now I want white in the foreground. And I'm gonna select radi uh, the radial gradient tool, which is right here. And start somewhere like around the hips, around this area. Hold shift and drag down. So we get a nice hot spot like that. Okay, so what I want to do now is um, I want to separate this because I want to make it seem like once the light hits the backdrop, it spreads out on, onto the floor. And as you can see, the circle is just a circle. What I want to do is take this half of the circle right here and spread it out. So what I'm going to do is grab this little, well, let's create a guide to help us out. 
what you want to do is grab your in the area of your ruler just click in there drag down to about right in the middle of where the first gradient was laid the crease right there and grab your um, square marquee tool right here and drag up to that line okay on on the uh, selected layer of spotlight you want to click command J which is going to duplicate whatever was highly, uh, selected with the marquee tool uh, floor spot okay and what I'm gonna do is grab the same marquee tool and select this area again one more time and I'm gonna delete it off of the first first layer of this big spotlight I'm gonna delete that all right um, control D to deselect and I'm gonna go back up to the floor spotlight and I'm gonna hit control T which is transform tool or go down and edit transform and click on perspective and grab the corners and what we'll do is just drag that out like that I hit control T one more time to control the scale and drag it out like that probably about right there that'd be cool all right hit enter and probably gonna drop down the opacity a little bit on the big spotlight about right there something like that I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't want to see this anymore. There we go. And what we're gonna do is bring this crease up and bring it above that, both of those layers. Actually, there we go. All right. And we're almost done. Uh, above that, we're gonna create another layer. And this is gonna be Spotlight 2. And what we're gonna do is grab the brush tool and we're gonna click right behind her to create a even more um, brighter spotlight. Click on maybe twice, depending on your style, I guess, how, however you want that to be uh, determined on how bright you want that is. You can even move that around. Well, as you can see, the squares, because you clicked on the corner, so what I'm gonna do is just um, and hit control T and just drag that to about right there so it's evenly in her back so you can see it evenly on the left side and on the right all right and there's your backdrop um, I'm gonna change some color um, what I like to do is add texture also so um, I'll click on this um, adjustment layers folder and go down to pattern and click on um, something like grayscale paper. When you get grayscale paper, you get these different type of uh, paper patterns. I just like to do this to add some type of texture. And click on, oh, I'll go with this one. And click on multiply. It's a little dark, but what I, want, what I think I'm gonna do is just drop the opacity some. Another good trick too also, so it doesn't look like it's straight down, is to um, <clears throat> grab the marquee tool and grab like right where the bottom separated. And click in the mask right here. You want to fill that in with black, which is right here in your default color, which is alt, uh, alt backspace. And what it'll do is take out that bottom. So you just left with this at the top. And I'm gonna duplicate that layer and click on the mask for the top part. There we go. Let's click on this and type in top. And this will be the bottom. Uh, the reason you can't see this for the bottom yet because we haven't inverted the layer. As you, the white part of the layer is what's visible and the black is what's not visible. So in order to make this visible, we need to invert it. So we're gonna create control I. And once you can click Control I, you'll see just the bottom layer. All right. So to turn this into a layer, so we can stretch this out as it was a background, like we did with the bottom of this radius. I'm going to go up to Layer and Rasterize. I'm gonna rasterize the fill and the content so I can convert it from a pattern into an actual layer. And now, since it's converted into an actual layer and it's not a pattern, I could click on this layer and click right click with my mouse or my pen that I'm using on my tablet and apply that image. So now it's just that bottom piece.
Now that we have just this bottom piece, we're gonna hit Control T or Transform. And we're gonna go to Perspective once more and just drag out these corners to give it the illusion as if she's actually sitting on the floor with the texture. And just drop the opacity down a little on that. There we go. Come down right there, I guess. We can bring this back in and have a top part and just drop the opacity on that also. There we go. Cool. All right, now I can, what I might do too also is go to the original backdrop and change the hue saturation by going to image. You can just hit control U, but I'm gonna show you where it's at. Uh, adjustment, hue saturation, and just probably bring down the darkness a little, about right there. I think I like that right there, yeah. You can always change it, you know. All right, we'll go back up to the top. Add another adjustment layer, another hue saturation, or control U. And just hit colorize. Once you hit colorize, you can get some color in there. That simple. And you also change the saturation whether you want it more vibrant or a little desaturated. And you can you know, just pick whatever color you want. Just scroll this little tab here and to pick a nice little decent color. I kind of like that blue. Blue looks pretty nice right, right there. A little more this way, yeah. I'll probably desaturated it a little. I kind of want it to look, you know, just like the seamless backdrop. You know, most seamless backdrops aren't this super bright. You know, if they, you know, they have a little desaturation in it. I'm not saying they don't sell any, but I'm pretty sure. There we go, right there, and. Um, once again, also you can change with the lightness and the darkness, and it well, looks pretty good light. Also, let me see something. You can always go back to that layer, and you can always go to your first crease. Hit Control U, saturation, and you can you know, darken that or lighten it. But I kind of like this darken by right there. There we go. Cool. All right, so just that simple. You can always go back and change the brightness and the darkness of the spotlight behind her. That's the beauty of adding separate layers instead of doing everything on one layer. Because you can always go back and control the opacity of how dark you want it, how bright you want it. Also with the color, change the color also. And there you have it, digital backdrop. All right, thank you guys for checking out my tutorial. Uh, please subscribe to my page. Uh, I'll be doing a tutorial every week. Check out my work on my uh, website, www.mydellphotos.com. And uh, follow me on Instagram at MadSDesigns with a Z at the end. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks.